This is the BBC. You're listening to Thursday's episode of The Archers from BBC Radio 4. Look, we're nearly there, Adam, I promise you. And then the partnership will be 100% ready for liftoff. Hello? Only me. No, I've got to go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh-uh. Righto. Bye. Oh, sorry, darling. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, I'm glad you did, Lillian. What on earth have you got there? Your punch bowl. Jenny lent it to me for the party. What did you think it was? I meant the dog. Oh, don't ask. Oh. Well, you just missed Jenny. She's gone shopping in Borchester. Oh, puppy, leave Brian's shoelaces alone. <laughs> Hello, young fella. <laughs> What's his name? He's a she, actually, and uh, her name's... Uh, Pooch. Yeah, that's it, Pooch. <laughs> She's a sweet little thing. Come on, aren't you, Pooch? Yes, you are. Yes, She's you are. She's an annoying little thing. I'm, uh, I'm looking after her for a friend who didn't think to provide a lead, so oh. Linda's had to lend me one of the late scruffs. Oh, poor Linda. You know, she's terribly upset about Caroline. Everyone's in shock. Mm. You were very close, too, weren't you? What? Uh, yes, yes, she was... She, uh, I was very sorry to hear... Anyway, Jenny's, Jenny's written to Oliver. Yeah. Oh, you know, Caroline dying so suddenly like that. Gosh, it makes you think. You know, about what being happy is all about. Yeah, it really does, yeah. Now, now, I'm sorry, Lillian, I'd love to talk. Ruth's popping round any minute. Yeah, well, don't, yeah, I won't keep you. I don't suppose you've seen Matt in the last couple of days? No, why? Oh, not to worry. Not important. Hi. <coughs> not too early, am I? Oh, hi, Lillian. Hi. And who are you, you gorgeous little thing? Pooch, Ruth, Ruth, Pooch. <laughs> Look, right, I'll, I'll leave you to it. Uh, if you see Matt, will you tell him to call me? I will. Come on, you ridiculous little <laughs> <laughs> hey, Come and have a seat, Ruth. Uh, would you like coffee? I've just had one, thanks. <sighs> OK, then. I thought I should let you know my thoughts about becoming Rory's attorney as soon as possible. You must all be chomping at the bit to get this going. Well, Adam certainly is. I'm very flattered that you asked me, Brian. But it's really important you understand that I'm no pushover. Sorry? If you approach me because you think I'll back you up loyally every time... Well, I'm not the one for you. Another cuppa? Please. <laughs> well, so long as we keep it in the family, I don't mind if the tea room beats the bull in the local ingredients category tomorrow. I'd rather lose to you than anyone else. Hmm. It wouldn't it be great if Helen won again for a cheese? <laughs> Wayne's making canopies for one of the stalls. Bellworthy wine merchants. Mm. You'll want to know which one you prefer. The goat's cheese tartlets or the mini beetroot burgers? Tell him the burgers should never, ever be purple. And that's a rule for life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't you want to answer that, darling? Well, it's probably Jill Archer again. You know, she left three voicemails this morning. I hope that wine merchant's paying Dad well. Oh, he drove a hard bargain. But he's still not rich enough to help his only daughter buy a house. <laughs> Is this mortgage business still bugging you? I can't help it, Mum. I don't want to be Harrison's kept woman. Oh. When we buy a house together as equals, or we're doomed. No relationship's doomed, darling. You think I'm being silly? No, not silly. Sensible. But maybe just a little bit too sensible. It is possible to overthink things sometimes. I'm guessing that means that you and Kenton can't help with the money. Oh, darling, we would in a heartbeat. But you know our situation. Paying back Ruth and David. Ugh, investing in Toby's gin. We're living from month to month for the foreseeable. Yeah, I thought so. I honestly can't think of anyone better suited to be Rory's attorney than you, Ruth. I was speaking to Debbie about it yesterday, and she said to tell you she hopes you say yes. You can flatter me all you like, but I'll only agree if you hear me out. Not oh, far away. I'd be honoured to be Rory's attorney. He's a great lad, and that's all down to you and Jennifer. 
but I'll be my own person. Absolutely. And I won't be used by you to support whatever battles you're fighting with Adam or Debbie. I won't take sides. Is that clear? That's music to my ears. Good. Well, in that case, it's a yes, then. Oh, I'm so pleased, Ruth. Come on, let's shake on it. <laughs> you drive a hard bargain. You must get your straight talking from Jill. Probably. And from me mum, too. Jill's been bending my ear about that new restaurant in Borchester. She did mention something. She doesn't approve of me reserving a table for their gala opening. She's become quite evangelical about waste. And I applaud her for it. She didn't persuade you to cancel, then? I'm afraid not. So, if I leave on a train straight after my meeting, I shall be back home in time for supper. Yeah, can't wait, darling. I've missed you. Me too. Let's have a quiet evening in and an early night. It's just what I was thinking. <coughs> no, uh, no, let you let go now. That cushion's <coughs> Chinese silk. Lillian, is that a dog? Uh, uh, sort of. Oh, well done. Now, who's a good guy? Yes, you are. No, no, it is or it isn't. Well, it's a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> She's just licked my face. Oh, no, get down, you dog. Don't, I go to London for two days and you get a dog. <laughs> well, I didn't get her. She got me. I'm, um... Well, I'm dog-sitting for a friend, that's all. Which friend? Um, oh, you don't know her. Petra. She she lives in, um... In Kenilworth. Mm. Dog mad. It's only for a day or two. She'll be gone before you get home. Now, no, don't you give me that look. Get what? Honestly, Justin, I swear she understands every word I say. Oh, you sound quite smitten. No, 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 of course not. I, I'm not a doggy person. Look, darling, I, I'd better go. It's probably time she went outside again. OK, well, I'll text you if I'm delayed. Bye. Bye-bye, darling. You are dropping me right in it, you naughty pup. Yeah, there have been some complaints about those lads as it happens. Uh, mm. I'll keep an eye on them for you. Yeah, thanks, Harrison. There you go. A pint of shires and a large merlot. On the house. Hey, no need for that. Oh, please, my treat. Thanks, Mum. Yeah, well, it's the least I can do. <laughs> it's all I can do, more like. Excuse me, eh? Hello, my darling. What can I get you? Should we sit outside? I've got some news. OK. <laughs> well, go on then, Harrison. I'm all ears. Well, first of all, Will Grundy rings, out of the blue. Oh? Yeah, and says he's still angry about how I wangled the women onto the cricket team, but he's prepared to let bygones be bygones. What's changed his mind? Well, reading between the lines, I think he's very cut up about Caroline Sterling. All right. Mm. Well, it makes you think, doesn't it, when something like that happens? It forces you to work out what's really important in life. Yeah. Right. You OK, love? Yeah. Oh, it's just Jill Archer won't leave me alone. She's left messages all day. And then I'm just off the phone after firming up the details with the Duxford Sisters PR, you know, about opening the fate, and Jill rings again. It says she doesn't think that they should be doing it because they're too full of themselves. <laughs> What's it to her? So I'm like, I'm sorry, Jill. It's not your decision to make. If you really feel strongly, you can make your case at the next committee meeting. She'll come round, love. <sighs> So your call from Will, was that your big news? Ah. I popped into the building society at lunchtime to see what kind of mortgage we could get. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like we should be able to afford a house around £250,000. It's brilliant, eh? Well, it would be if I could contribute. Oh, look, I told you, love, it's, it's not a problem. It is, Harrison. It's why I can't marry you. Whoa! <laughs> Who said anything about marriage? Where's all this come from? Right, if we get married and split up, I don't deserve half a house that you've paid for. Oh, this is daft, look. Look, we're not even talking about marriage at the moment. Are we? And how can you be so sure you don't want to get married? Well, because of the mess my parents made of it. And that's why you're convinced relationships don't last? They don't. You can't think like that. I mean, apart from anything else, it makes me really sad. Me too. Listen to me. Married or not, the house that we buy together will be our house. Yours and mine. You can be pessimistic all you like, but I believe in us, for now and forever. I don't know how much clearer I can say it. No welcome hug. I can't move. She's fallen asleep on my lap. Oh, I see. Your friend's dog. <laughs> I thought she'd be gone by now. Oh, isn't she a poppin? Oh, she is rather cute. <laughs> But she has to go, or you'll be arrested for dog-napping. 
Oh, it was such a tedious meeting this afternoon. <laughs> the chap chairing it, honestly, Lillian. Paint was watching him dry. <laughs> I, I couldn't wait to get back here with my lovely, ever-attentive lady. Oh, look at her little ears. If you want a dog, I'll get you a dog. I want this one. Darling, you can't. She's such a friendly little thing. Oh, look at that face. No, but she belongs oh. to someone else. <sighs> she doesn't. No, your pal, what's her name? Justin. There is no friend. I, I made her up. Matt gave me the puppy for my birthday. What? His idea of a joke, you know, to put the cat or the dog amongst the pigeons. So we can't keep her. If we do, Matt's one. I see. Well, you seem to have fallen for her. She has definitely fallen for you. Well, that's as maybe, but we'll both just have to get over it. Oh, that man is certainly very irritating. I know, and that's why we can't keep her. Probably for the best. <sighs> definitely. <laughs> Darling, you don't honestly think I can make you get rid of her, do you? What? After all, it's not the puppy's fault that Matt Crawford gave her to you. And just think how fit we'll get taking her for walks. Really? This house needs a dog. And I've always thought so. Now, what's her name? <laughs> I didn't dare give her one, apart from Pooch. Oof, can't call her that. <laughs> Let's see. How about Ruby, to match your birthstone? Oh, that's just perfect. Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby it is, then. <laughs> But I don't deserve equity if you pay the lion's share of the mortgage, Harrison. But I feel like I'd be taken advantage. Only if I felt that too, and I really and truly don't. Well, OK, then. I'd feel like your tenant. Oh, wow. Oh, that came out wrong. I, I, that isn't what I meant at all. OK, then. What, what, what if we split the equity so that if we broke up, the share would be, like, 70-30 or whatever? Is this you trying to make it better because it's not working? Why the hell are we imagining how we divide a house we haven't even bought yet? Oh, listen to us, Fallon. This is mad. I suppose it is. I love your independence. I love your pride. I even love your pig-headedness. I mean, look how long it took us to get together. But not if it means we don't do this. Please, I can afford it, so please let me. If that's what you want. Is it? Yeah. It is. Of course it is. This is the BBC. Learn about the Archer's characters with our online who's who at bbc.co.uk forward slash archers.